What an exciting and intriguing week this one has been. While some Ghanaians were featured on obituary like kind of posters, His Excellency the President was in Guyana piling up more accolades. But the thing is, back in Ghana, the swift rescue of two Canadian nationals has got families sending stern warning to the president that 2020 we go show now. But this research about minority MPs being more efficient than their majority colleagues got the Speaker of Parliament worried. Before anyone will consider the Speaker's appeal for better understanding of the job of MPs, a certain Bantuma I mean the MP for Bantuma, he took the wind out of his sail uh, with his I might chop chop question. Now, perhaps the headline of the week is NDC chairman of Uzumpovo is on the run as he changes hotels like diapers. I simply love how the MPP government is putting the fear of God in the Church of Pentecost elder. For all these and more, my competent production team crew and I count it all joy to recount to you an amplified version of the week's stories here on Backpage on City TV with me, Caleb Kuda. Welcome. So, two parties. They're chasing the same girl. Call her Hannah. How are they running affairs? Well, it shifts. So far, each, no, every other eight years. So, say during the period, the outlier gets to be in the kitchen, the hall, the bedroom, you name it. The other, though, lingers around the corridor, the windows, chase, periphery, and casa. Tragically, even though Hannah is endowed enough to be self reliant, these two guys have worked closely together in the dark, but seemingly apart in the light to keep her impoverished. What's more, these two guys have been boring to fend for a Hannah who is actually very resource rich. In fact, the situation is so bad that often these guys borrow money to clear borrowed money. Like a great cute Hanian man once said, I quote him for fear of plagiarism, quote, Ghana is not poor. No, it's, Hannah is not poor. It is bad leadership that has made her poor. I will quote her safely now. Hannah is disenchanted, but the two guys have been trying to show her who between the two is better at keeping her indebted. So they sent their signs to point out their point of view to the Bernardino Fukuku Avle. But under the IMF ECF, yes. we were not allowed to do co um, um, net commercial loans of more than 500 million. So that's commercial? Yes. So year, say, so this year, this year, this year, this year, net commercial. This year, this year is yeah. 750 okay. million. It's in the budget. But you that's can check it out. That's that's it. It. So if you choose so to call under the even the attack is free, I'll come there. I'll say that. You can decide to call under the attack. If you choose to call under the attack, I'll come there. I'm coming. Look, I don't lie. That's your own documents. It's in the budget. No, but is that false? Is that false? No, no, no. Wait, wait. Isaac, wait. Let me. let me. No, but is that false? No, I can say what. Yeah, it's false. I want to show him that it's false. It's false. Why is it false? It's false. It is false. Bernard, let me say that I've been involved with this IMF discussion for years. Okay. While all these were ongoing, there is one man. Apparently, he's one of the competent men. We hear his government spokesperson on finance. People say one hour, 30 minutes into the discussion, he was just taking notes. In fact, the fool's cap got full. He asked for more papers when finally he displays his wisdom. My mother will say, oh, bo 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 boy, and you say. We have a country to govern and to manage, mm. and to manage out, out of the crisis you took us through. And what he just read is to tell you exactly how we are doing it. Let me say this. The truth sometimes hurts. So when you see these numbers up there, you try to discredit it. No, they are cooked up numbers. Of they, they, they are not cooked. <laughs> they cooked they can't just stand it. <laughs> That's one. Well, the, the atomized loan, project by project, and we all sit in the finance committee and look at it and look at the purpose of the loan we and look, look at, at the interest one. rate. What he just told us. You brought it. Okay, please. This one. And does it mean that you were not in the house or you were sleeping on your job? Look for it. Debt loop profiling, you might think it's just replacing numbers with numbers. No. It gives you the opportunity to run the country. Managing the country is not chinchinka. 
Oh, it's not color only issues. Right? What's happening? So you use the money to no, fix the on. light? To keep the light on? If I don't know anything at all, just one example. Bantuma today, in our history, have asphalted roads. Bantuma, over 200,000 students, people are going to school. Free senior high school. You call it chop chop. Am I chop chop? My parents borrowed to fi finance my education. You call me chop chop? I am not. <laughs> now, after the show, we are told this is how his impression of his own performance was like. I was part of those who are writing the BC. It was so sweet. It was so fantastic. I never knew. I never knew in my life that the BC is so cheap like this. Oh my God! I'm so excited. Yeah, I mean, that was fantastic on the show, right? Honorable, you're a big man. And people say you're very sharp. We loved you. And we are looking forward to your second coming. But the question is whether 80 billion or 70 whatever billion dollars, what are we really doing with the bird money? At the point I had, we were doing free SHS, and I was like, anyway, some time ago, I interviewed one of the competent one, two, three, who is these days a senior Rosewood minister on the feasibility of a promise to provide SHS students with a bar of chocolate, like every day. Basically, one student, one chocolate bar, one day. He was cocksure in his response, they would deliver. Well, the school feeding Teti Akrala... <sighs> In February this year, I visited the Banyamni Methodist Nursery and Primary School, a beneficiary of the school feeding program. It was a few minutes past 10 in the morning and people were on break preparing to have their meals. So I moved closer to the kitchen. Some people who had already queued for the rice and beans meal, popularly called wache, were gradually walking away. And this was the reason they gave me for their action. When they cook their food, it should not be nice. It will just be basai. When I eat, when I just come to class, I don't, I don't concentrate. If said cheating, I cannot concentrate because my, my stomach will be paining me. Charlie, this one, there. Yeah. I beg, wow. It, it's, 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 it's not cool. It's not nutritious. It doesn't look nice. And, and, so, Charlie, show us some competence levels. Why? Because this one here, Napo Isabu Kra, Una, do something. Do something. Now, being Ghanaian must mean more than owning a passport. Or oh, did I hear Ghana card? Anyway, it appears being Canadian means more to the Ghanaian government than a Ghanaian is to the Ghanaian government. I disagree, though. But. That seems to be the sentiment among the Ghanaian people. Here's why. Now, since the day of the abduction of these two women, security operatives have been working their contacts with the hope of rescuing them. Intelligence gathering efforts enabled the security agencies to zero in on persons who are associated with the incident. At 1900 hours on June 11, 2019, the first arrest was made in connection with this incident. By 2115 hours on that same day, one of the persons who was an accomplice or believed to be an accomplice directly involved in this incident was also arrested by the joint team running this operation. You know, this was only one week, just one week ago, after the Canadian women got kidnapped. Some say it appears the government is more worried about issues that gives it a bad name abroad than issues dear to the hearts of citizens here at home. Two young Canadian women are free today after a rescue operation in West Africa. They were kidnapped a week ago in Ghana in the major city of Kumasi. Now, Lauren Tilly on the left of a picture we're about to show you and Bailey Chitty had been working with a group called Youth Challenge International. They're reported to be physically unhurt and getting emotional and psychological support from professionals. 
Now, some people have been comparing the speed with which the Canadian authorities rose up to the occasion and that of ours. But how is it like, really? If you really hilly. Sorry, sir? Say that again? If you really hilly. If you really hilly. Well, surprise, surprise. We are told actually the Canadian experts didn't do anything in this rescue. The operation involved the CID of the Ghana Police Service, the Bureau of National Investigations, the Special Weapons and Tactics Unit of the National Security Council, and Defense Intelligence. No foreign assets were involved in the operation. The best part of the story, though, is that um, our own Azugu nation, I mean, my own, the time I was with there, no brother, better, my own, the one and only Azugu nation, Azugu nation, golden mosquito nets, Mintra Toli. Well, it was shocking. If our own men could, it was shocking that what our own men could do for Canadians, we, we, we don't seem to have been able to do the same for our own. One of the persons arrested in Togo, as reported last week, that is believed to be in connection with the Tadi uh, girl's matter. Um, I think because the story has come out, and indeed today he's been remanded by the courts, uh, yes, we can confirm that. Ordinarily, the preference would have been that all of these ongoing operations are kept quiet because as you keep talking about it and publishing things about it, you keep alerting other people that the security agencies may be on to. But because that is out, um, yes, we can confirm that one. But that is also evidence that the security agencies are working on that and other related matters. That's all we can say. All right, then, let's keep on keeping on. Why? As for promises, if they could be converted to brick and mortar, the messages of hope and counter hope alone could build us proper structure that we'll be proud of to use for our Ghana Beyond Aid uh, document. Anyway, the families of the Tardy girls have a word for the person. Please listen. What are you saying is that we are already disappointed the way they are handle our sister issue. Because we all know that in Ghana here, yeah, our leaders treat foreigners special. So I don't know why uh, they are wasting time on my sister issue. And this one, they're just two or three weeks they have wasted them. So we are very disappointed and we are warning the government. We are just telling him that we are the citizen here. Yeah, so at the end of the day, we will vote. So he should be very careful. The way he's handled the issue, we are very disappointed. Very, very, because it's getting to one year now. So we, we, we don't know. We, we are very disappointed. Seriously. Yeah, seriously. Now, while the family reminds the president of his obligation to the Ghanaian people, the people of Guyana were awarding our president with the highest national award called Order of Excellence for his commitment and unflinching support to the progress of developing countries, right? Here is the best part of that particular story. While the president was away, he promised the people of Guyana that we will assist them with technical support in the exploration of oil and gas. Now, some people said, eh, now we are exporting promises. And I said, oh, people of Guyana, these are comments I'm bringing you, they are not mine. They said, people of Guyana, on behalf of the president, we like to apologize to your president. You people stop that thing. It's not fair. You have to stop that. It's not fair. I mean, that's not cool. But some great things happened this week. Really great things. Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire announced that they have won concessions from stakeholders in the cocoa industry, including acceptance of a $2,600 floor price for a ton of cocoa. Basically, <laughs> basically, you know, cocoa farmers will get more value for their sacks of cocoa beans. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I say. Now, this is good news, all right? And I'm sure this is how cocoa farmers feel about it right now. Generally, I'm happy. Generally, I'm happy. If in January they are this happy, I can imagine how happy they will be in December. <laughs> anyway, good news there, good news there. January, we are very happy. Now, can you guess who the most frustrated citizen in Ghana is right now? 
Here's a clue. On weekends, he's an elder of the Church of Pentecost. And on weekend, on weekdays, he's a suspect of arson and kidnapping. Well, if you still don't get it, check this out. I was inside there, but the lawyer said we should excuse them so that they would deal with the matter. But you can believe in me, the lawyers are so frustrated. They are furious because they got here early and the assurance that they were given, they had the assurance, they had the word from the police. <laughs> well, some say, oh, this is a case of the NPP using the police as a remote control to frustrate the chairman of the biggest opposition party. Others say, it serves him right. And that, eh, next time, when your party boys are disappointed in your decision to pull out of an election, find better things to encourage them instead of allegedly inciting them to cause, you know, fire and kidnap people and general sense of insecurity. Now, how do you even prove your innocence? Anyway, the way I always see people troop to the police CID headquarters anytime Mr. Samuel Ofusampovo is called upon, looks like the unemployment problem must be bigger than we all think it is. And people really have time. And now my boy. <laughs> Welcome back to Backpage on City TV. I am Caleb Kuda. Frankly, many thought the president's comment at the Women Deliver conference in Vancouver and the uproar that came with it had ebbed, as in ended. Only for us to see a new wave of controversies. Already, some female MPs were released to defend their boss or smell pepper. Then, before we could see, no, boom, testing mic one, two, please check the amplifier, amplified by Nana, oh, <laughs> and for Nana, was all over the place. The concern, though, is that, sincerely, the artworks are not waste art. And people say they couldn't tell the difference between the posters and the most popular kind of posters you see when you go to Co. Some say there must be some value for money audit because Charlie, I don't know, he said I'm queen, yes, sir. Well, that was about it. No trouble. Let's just move on. Let me turn your attention to the cleanest market in Western region. The Takwadi market circle is a very crucial market when it comes to trading and general commerce within the Sekinita Kwadi metropolis. Again, a lot of money is actually realized from tolls and refuse collection by the assembly. But unfortunately, this is the sad state of refuse collection when it comes to the market circle. Residents have been complaining and traders who actually come here to apply their trade are also not happy with the situation. In fact, a lot of even those in the market, some are getting sick and those are run. Every week they go to hospitals, I, I hear and I, I see some. So the, uh, the refuse here is, is really affecting lives. And... Zoomline Limited, the firm contracted by the Assembly to manage waste here at the Takwadi Market Circle, is expected to do about two to three liftings of waste generated here on a daily basis. However, the Western Regional Manager, Al Haji Abdullah Abdallah, says they are unable to fulfill their responsibility because the Sekendi Takwadi Metropolitan Assembly has failed to make the Sofokrom landfill site more trouble for its tracks since the onset of the rains. The STMA's public relations officer, John Last, who would not speak on the issue, directed City News to demand answers from the Takwadi Sub-Metro. But an official at the Takwadi Sub-Metro told City News the Sofokrom landfill site is beyond them and must be handled by the Sekendi Takwadi Metropolitan Assembly. I could smell how the place, you know, smells so good in here in the studio. There's so wait. Waste manage managers say city authorities must clear the landfill site before they can dispose of the waste they carry. City authorities say, nah, we no longer have oversight responsibility over the area, so go somewhere else. Just say, Basa, who takes the lampo at the market? Who takes the toll? Or oh, the leadership there, you no. Know, is on autopilot. It, 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 it. Is that what is happening? Look, let me bring you something else. Right? I didn't want to remind you of this story, but uh, there, is, there is a cause. Because it's been one year since a 70-year-old man died after seven hospitals in Accra turned him away from their facilities over claims there were no beds. This is what the wife told us at the time. Now we are on my papa. 
We are doctor, papa. Doctor, do share the mama when you are be wuni a frowny a book to do. Mammy Penny want to send me a book to do when him. I said, Mammy, sorry. And Penny went to meet the men yesterday. And Penny went to meet the men yesterday. Me you I'm a yum, me yum, 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 yum. You only a man cry. You only a man say. I said, I'm so bin a miss. I said, I'm so bin a miss. Well, what about me, baby? What about you? A year on, it appears no one has been punished for all the pain the family has gone th to, through and not much has changed. So on point of view, people trusted with positions, authority and resources were empaneled to answer questions. Pay close attention to the look on Bernard's face. I mean, as the leader of nurses in Ghana, listening to portions of the report and the conduct of some of your members a year ago, I mean... I'm, I'm, I'm sure you owe Ghanaians an apology in some, in some shape or form, do you not? That is rightly so. And the right way to describe the situation is uh, preposterous. I do not think that uh, we uh, have any excuse, you know, in these uh, scenes of uh, incidents that happened uh, one year ago. And uh, we have rendered apologies where it is due. So um, we have also resolved to make amends in the way we discharge our duties. And so I do not think that from this time, as the Director General rightly said, uh, we're going to see any, any such thing happening, especially when it is about um, making sure at all costs mm. that we give it. Long live Ghana. We refuse to land. The wild part, wild part of this is that an MP a, and a powerful deputy minister once rushed his wife to about three hospitals. He was turned away. His wife was turned away over claims there were no beds. This same thing. Finally, she died in another facility. And this MP cool minister passed out. He woke up in a luxury ward in the same hospital where his wife died with two extra luxury beds. While all his wife needed earlier. Charlie, things keep looming. You know. It just... Look, Father's Day is around the corner. But before we end on that note, do you remember this quote? Being a Ghanaian must put a certain responsibility on each of us. Calling yourself a Ghanaian must mean you have signed up for a certain definable code of conduct. Unquote. Do you remember that quote at all? Good. It's good you remember. If you don't, just Google it. Now, a dispatch rider lived up to this challenge. He saw two Indians dump bags of refuse on a major road in Tema. He stopped them because he was on a motorbike and asked them to pick it up. Guess what was his reward? Police station. When he got down to pick the refuse, his angry driver called the police that I have raised my voice at his boss. That was when his boss also got angry at me. Not long after, the police showed up and took me to the station. They told me to go that they will deal with my superiors. But the way one of the female police officers insulted me, it's really pained me to be honest. Those of us who have motorbikes see people throw refuse onto the roads all the time. But it is risky stopping them. You either lose your life or get a police case, just as I was framed as a criminal. So next time when you see someone drop rubbish, you stop I'm not sure. If you're doing something for the love of...